office assistance office uh, and I help moderate these meetings, keep it going, answer questions, things like that. Uh, today we have a uh, guest speaker at the last minute. We we'll very much appreciate Mr. Uh, Mr. Wicker helping us out. Uh, his name is Chris Wicker. He's the Deputy District Director for the Minnesota District Office of the U.S. Small Business Administration. Uh, the SBA is one of our partners that we work with. On this meeting, too, we have the Better Business Bureau, the Minnesota Chamber, uh, the Minnesota Small Business uh, Development Centers, and certainly uh, our agency, the Department of Employment and Economic Development. So with that, Chris, I will kick it off to you. Go for it. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you all for your time. And I'm really happy to be here last minute, uh, which is actually perfect because uh, otherwise I was going to be working on like performance reports or something super boring. So um, my name is Chris Wicker. I am the deputy director of the SBA's Minnesota District Office. Uh, part of the reason I wanted to do this presentation today is because I am brand new to the role. So if you haven't seen me before, it's probably because I haven't been here before. I just started on July 1st. Um, I have a background in small business just to let you know a little bit about uh, who's the deputy here at SBA. Um, I'm, a, first of all, an Air Force veteran. I was uh, in the Air Force for six years on active duty. I also was a defense contractor, um, and I'm a former small business owner myself. I started a cleaning company after four years in Afghanistan, decided to do something just a, a little bit uh, less threatening uh, than that work overseas. And so a cleaning company, I thought, in theory, would be less stressful. Uh, as if many of you business owners on the call may already know, it is not at all less stressful. It is exactly the same amount of anxiety just in different ways. Uh, at least in my experience, that's just me. But um, after doing that, uh, I've done lots of community development and economic development work uh, since then. And then I've been a financial advisor, which is another form of a small business owner. And now I am here at the SBA as their kind of program manager. So for all the different programs that SBA off uh, offers, uh, the Minnesota representatives here are managed by me, uh, as well as our district director, Brian McDonald. So that's a quick summary of who I am. Really, really happy to be here, even if it's less than 60 days on the job. I do have a presentation just to go over a quick overview of some stuff. Um, I'm going to challenge my technology capabilities and see if I can actually share this. Um, and of course, we have faith in you, Chris. I believe in. OK. Can everybody see that slide that I just loaded? Can anybody see that slide that I loaded? So far, no. Awesome. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's because I have a million screens in front of me. <laughs> so uh, let me just see if I can. Guys, I'm so sorry if you don't mind just waiting one second. We've got the time. Go ahead, Chris. OK. Dave, did you have something to say? I see your hand raised, or is that an accident? Perfect. Okay, how about now? Still no? I can't actually see anybody, so if somebody <laughs> would chime in. Is still, that no. still? No. Okay. It's not working. Are you... I'm you doing an awesome job. the share button on the top toolbar, the far right? There it goes. Um, great. Yep, you're up. So we're halfway there. Yep. Share. Well, yep. of course, I haven't actually shared my screen. This is fantastic, <laughs> guys. Everybody, just hold on. So I've hit the share button. If you if you hit the share, then you can pick which screen you want to share. It shows your screens to select. All right. Um, oh, that Wonder is neat. I thought that sounded like your voice. Now I can actually see you, but you're on like the fourth street screen, Neela. Yep, All right. we, we can see your presentation now. We can see it in the presentation view. Well, you said you wanted me to kill 15 minutes, so here it is. It's me <laughs> processing through a slideshow now. <laughs> the little red bar on my screen says that this is the screen that I'm sharing. It's the slide that I'm trying to share. Am I in the right place now? Yes. Okay. Awesome. All right. So 
Uh, no need to do the title slide. All right. So uh, if you're not dialing in, if you can see this presentation on your screen right now, uh, I want you to take a moment and jot down this information if you think you'll ever need it. So uh, there are a variety of SBA programs that we offer. Uh, we're good friends with DEED. At least I think we are. Neil, you can correct me. But we're, uh, we are working together in this ecosystem of economic development and small business support. So I represent the the SBA's programs. What you see in front of you is my contact information. That is my desk phone. That is my email address. And if you ever have a problem, please let me know. We have a team of eight people here. They are the smartest people uh, that could possibly do this work. We're so very, very fortunate to have awesome people in this office. And so if you run into an issue, uh, especially as it relates to an SBA program, we can definitely help you out. By the way, before I go forward, I'm going to give a brief overview of what the SBA does. For those of you who might not be familiar, I'm going to talk about some of the recent stuff that we've been working on. And I encourage any of you uh, to come off of mute and ask a question. If you have it, please feel free to interrupt me. If you're not asking a question, if you could stay on mute, that would just be great uh, so that everybody else can hear well. So um, I'm sure there's chat in this as well. I can't see the chat, but uh, if anybody wants to hammer anything into the chat, um, one of our good friends at Deed, I'm I sure gotcha. will yell at me. Uh, gotcha, okay, Chris. great. <clears throat> Thank you. So if you're not familiar with the SBA, we are the Small Business Administration. This is actually a cabinet level agency, which means that our administrator reports directly to the president. Uh, so we are working very, very high level government support to small businesses across the United States. I like to chop it up into what you see in front of you, start, grow, expand and recover. But one of the other acronyms that we used to use um, is uh, CCCD, and this was really helpful because it's counseling, contracting, capital, and disasters. So those are really our are big places. So uh, if you are in need of business counseling, not mental health counseling, although some of our folks could probably do a role if you need it, uh, but if you needed business counseling, if you've got questions, if you need technical assistance, we've got really, really great people that can help you figure out the really big questions like who's my target market and why in the world am I selling this product or service, all the way down to some of those really, really fine questions like, hey, my bank is asking me for a cash flow statement, and I've never heard of that before. Can somebody please help me out? Counseling is a big thing that we all. You're on mute. Chris, Chris you're on Mark. mute. Trying to Still take you mute. off. Okay, can you hear me now? You're good. Yes. I must have hit a button. Oh, you're back on mute. Okay. Oh, you're live. <laughs> Stand by. I am going to kick myself off of this headset. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. All right, um, I can see my screen. Um, can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, all right. So I've had about as many uh, mistakes as I think I can have at this point. This should probably be the end. No, it's actually a, uh, something is like affecting my computer because it's trying to mute me. All right, I'll just keep we can good. Hear you. We can hear you well. Okay. And we can see your screen. So you're doing great. I'm glad somebody is recording this. If anybody wants to know in the future <laughs> how to manage a really excellent presentation, just. Um, let me, I mean, I am having like Teams issues. I'm not really sure why. So stand by. All right. 
Uh, I have, <laughs> and somebody has bravely raised their hand. Um, I won't try and mispronounce that name, but if you've raised your hand, uh, go ahead and ask your question. Okay, hearing nothing. Um, let me let me proceed forward. We were just talking about contracting. Um, contracting is a really important support service that this office provides because the U.S. government is one of the largest employers and contractors in the United States, and it benefits the government to have a diversity of uh, government contracts under its belt. We not only want to work with diverse audiences, we want to work with diverse contractors, but it also, just from a purely business standpoint, helps with the finances. More people equals more competition and higher quality of work. So uh, we have several different programs. I could talk all day about this related to government contracting, but if you're interested in working with the government, we have some low-level presentations that can orient you to that, as well as some high-level programs that you can get involved with. So we've talked about counseling, we're talking about contracting, and the other thing I want to talk about is capital. I think the number one question that we get here at SBA, and I'm sure the folks over um, at, uh, at Neela's office would also tell you that where's the money is a very, very big question. It costs money to start a business business. And there are a variety of programs out there to provide financing to people that are trying to start a business or are in business and trying to grow or have grown and are trying to expand into new markets. And so again, I could spend a bunch of time going over these programs, but I really want to focus on a couple of different things. Number one, if you are looking for a grant, also known as free money in exchange for doing the work that you're trying to do, the chances are it's not out there. And that's not to crush anybody's dreams, but there are very limited grant programs that are out there. As far as the SBA is concerned, I'm not speaking towards state level programs, but at the federal level, Grants are primarily reserved for small business innovation and research. There are, again, some other limited programs that are available out there. But if you're interested in grant money, that's going to be a, a bit of a tougher challenge. And so then the second thing that you might be thinking about is I need a loan. So when it comes to capital, upfront capital, there are a few different loan programs that we offer. The very big one is called 7A. And um, that program can finance a whole bunch of different options to include working capital, which is something that I'll talk about soon. But if you're interested in getting a loan that is guaranteed by the SBA, so you'd still get that loan through your local lender and you'd work with the SBA to lower your risk and target your interest rate and make that more doable, you can come to our office for that. Uh, and then uh, finally, disaster recovery is a really, really big deal here in Minnesota. We've gotten uh, named disaster areas in the state of Minnesota right now. And so if you are a small business that is in a named disaster area, you've probably heard from the Small Business Administration or you're going to, and that's something that we'll be talking about soon as well, because that directly contributes to local economies. So I've just tossed a whole bunch of information out there. Does anybody have any questions based on the information I just provided? Chris, there's hey. a there's a question in the chat regarding, do you have a program to give assistance to Americans living overseas who only have a foreign address? The short answer to that is uh, if your business is based outside of the United States, but the majority of its work takes place in the United States, uh, that would qualify for some of the basic startup programs that we just listed. Perfect, so thank short you. So short answer is yes. Uh, yes. Um, if you're military or with the Foreign Service or in any of the other, if you're just an English teacher living in uh, another country, uh, for whatever reason you might find yourself overseas, uh, you can still be an American citizen running business taking place in the United States and still get a lot of this support. If you are a foreign entity running a foreign business in a foreign country, that obviously presents a lot of challenges, although there are still options available if you have a sizable customer base in the United States. Cool. Thanks. All sorts of details locked up in this head, guys. I can do this all day long. Uh, this is <laughs> I live in the weeds. Okay. All right. Uh, 
nothing further. I'm going to proceed to the next slide if I can manage to click the button. Okay. So one of the other things that I want to mention, in addition to the programs that the SBA provides, we have a network of resource partners. And so I want to break this down into two different things. We've got stakeholders and we've got resource partners. When we're talking about stakeholders, we're talking about the wonderful people at DEED. We're talking about people uh, in surrounding states. We're talking about the USDA. We're talking about FEMA. There are a lot of different organizations that we would consider stakeholders. They care about what we're doing. We're working with them on the things that they care about. And we've got a pretty broad network. You can come to us just as much as you can come to anybody else on a topic of reaching stakeholders. However, there are four specific SBA resource partners. Now, these are Pope. Blech. These are people, folks, I was going to say also, that have been funded by the SBA. So I want to go through these one at a time because they're all very, very special. Number one is SCORE. SCORE used to have an acronym. It's not an acronym anymore, but it is the nation's largest network of volunteer business experts, and they provide completely free one-to-one -one mentoring for anybody who is even remotely interested in starting a business, expanding, growing, even leaving their business. SCORE, uh, the chapter here in the Twin Cities, the SBA office that I'm from right now is right here in downtown Minneapolis. Score Twin Cities is the largest chapter in the United States. They have 200 volunteer business experts working there on just about every topic that you can imagine. And I have heard some pretty weird topics out of them. And they've got folks. In addition to that uh, free one-to-one -one mentoring, they provide a bunch of online training as well. And then they do some in-person training as well, usually for a very nominal fee. So SCORE is one. We have multiple wi women's business centers also here. So that's the second resource partner, the WBC's Women Business Centers. Here in the Twin Cities, we've got Women Venture who runs our WBC here. And then we've got Entrepreneur Fund up in uh, Duluth. And so if you're a woman-owned business and you'd like some woman Focus support. We really have some fantastic resource partners, really, really passionate people uh, that want to see women owned businesses succeed. Uh, thirdly, we've got the Veterans Business Outreach Center, the VBOC, uh, the liaison that we have here in this office is a veteran. I'm a veteran, and so that gets attention from us as well. Uh, if you are in the military, recently transitioned out of the military, or a veteran on a long term status, which is okay as well, uh, then we have some very very, very specific resources and an excellent relationship with the VA, which has recently improved even further, which I'll be talking about uh, in a couple of slides as well. And then finally, we have the Small Business Development Centers. This is a network of consultants that provide technical assistance. And let me tell you the difference. So mentoring at SCORE is unique because it's somebody to sit down and talk to about your business. They can't do anything for you, but they can certainly talk to you and help you work through all the little wickets that you want to talk about. A consultant is very different. They can actually provide one-on-one -on -one technical assistance. They'll sit down and hammer out that uh, cash flow statement that we were talking about. They'll help you come up with the business plan with you. We have business uh, SBDC, Small Business Development Centers throughout the state. They're paying their consultants. These are really good people. And if you're in rural Minnesota, this is going to be your closest resource to us that are located here in the city. And again, these are very, very passionate people. If you're in rural Minnesota and you're interested in doing that Main Street restaurant, if you've got that family farm or you want to venture out into something new uh, from maybe a family business that you've had out in the uh, outer regions of the state, these SBDCs are the folks to talk to. So before I move on, any questions on the resource partners? Okay, hearing nothing, I'll move on. I'll just say if you ever have any feedback about our resource partners, good, bad, or otherwise, please reach out and talk to our office. Uh, these are folks we care a lot about, and we know that they care a lot about you. And so if anything's going either really well or not so great, we definitely want to hear about it. Okay, Chris. Okay. Uh Chris, Mark Simmer here. Just want to jump in. SCORE has done a really good job in the last couple of years updating their website, their, their delivery of information. And I think what's really cool, if you haven't seen it, is they have photos and little bios of all their mentors. So if you're looking for someone who has maybe this ex experience, I met a person um, uh, that was in corporate finance, bought two car repair services, stole those. I mean, very detailed and pointed uh listings of who you can speak to. So it's 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 a really, really good organization. 
Uh, I appreciate that. As the former chapter chair of SCORE for two years, uh, I can I can tell you those are some of my personal friends. I've I've enjoyed uh, my relationship with them as I volunteered with them, and then now overseeing uh, the Twin Cities uh, and Minnesota chapters here. I can tell you those are hardworking folks. Everybody we've talking about very very hardworking folks. Uh, and there's websites and uh, links to everything that I'm talking about is on the SBA website sba.gov. Uh, the slide that you're looking at right now is just an example about how we're in the community right in front of you. Top left-hand corner is a visit uh, from the U.S. SBA Deputy Administrator uh, who came in from D.C. That's our office there. Uh, upper right-hand corner is the White House Initiative on Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders, which the far left person you see on that panel is Brian McDonald, our district director, talking about efforts that target specific ethnic groups and specifically those AAPI ethnic groups here in Minnesota. Uh, bottom left is a business visit that we did, a really fantastic, uh, it's actually a daycare center that you see behind us all there, and they've put some um, solar paneling on their roof. This is another great example of where the SBA can help your business succeed. They were able to use an SBA loan to get the um, solar panels on the roof of their daycare center, which started saving them money, obviously, immediately. And they were able to pay off that loan in short order because of that. And then on the bottom right hand screen is the Small Business Innovation and Research Roadshow that we went to. Out of the three people that you see, I am the one with hair on the left. Uh, Mike Jackson on the right uh, and Anna Schmiel in the middle are uh, partners that uh, colleagues that I have here in the office. So. Why does all this matter? We're here every single day and we are working out what I hope are innovative solutions for you guys every single day. So the first bullet that I wanna talk about is the SBA Working Capital Program. So up until now, if you wanted to get a loan from the SBA under what's called our 7A program, that's a very uh, that's typical program. Thinking, but I could not remember, so let me get back. If you are yeah. off mute and not asking a question, there we go. Um, so, the working capital program is a nice new benefit that we have for folks that are looking for a loan that's a little bit of a changing scenario. Instead of I need X amount of money for X amount of time and I'll pay it off by X date, the working capital program works a little bit more like a credit card. It's obviously more complex than that, certainly with dollar amounts up to 5 million. And so we've got specialists here in our office that can talk more about the specifics of that. But what, what comes alongside that is that one-on-one -on -one counseling that's not using SCORE, but that's actually a program that we're offering uh, here out of all of the SBA district offices. And so we're taking the information that we're getting out from you guys, the business owners, and we're using it to innovate these programs. If you're looking to start exporting your product and you need a bunch of money now to pay for upfront production, which you'll backfill later with sales, and then you got to do it again in six months, this kind of revolving line of credit is probably the kind of solution that you would be looking for. So uh, the other thing I want to talk about, again, is our relationship with the Department of Veterans Affairs. We've always had a good relationship with this organization, but there are obviously a, a bunch of limitations on what military people can and cannot do and what we can and cannot do in relation with military people. Uh, this recent memorandum of understanding has expanded a bit of the reach that the Small Business Administration has done because we heard from business owners that they didn't have the opportunity to look into these SBA programs programs before they left the military. And if you've been in the military and uh, had to transition out into the civilian world, it's a bit of a fast paced process. And so the more the the longer head start you can get on something instead of trying to figure it out after you're already in the civilian world can save you time, money and stress. Finally, I want to talk about SBA disaster assistance. There is a declared disaster in the Mankato area and uh, and some surrounding counties. I don't want to talk too specifically on this because we actually have a team of specialists that is on the ground helping people in the affected counties right now. So what I will just say is if you are interested in learning more about named disasters in the state of Minnesota, you can go to sba.gov slash disaster. And we do have a business recovery center located in Jacksonville, Minnesota and Waterbury. Minnesota. Any questions or concerns on any of that information? Chris, okay. I just have a I just have a quick question since I answer this question a lot. Is yes, the 
is the 7A program, is that going to be money directly from the SBA? Is it still going to be from a lender that participates in the in the program? So the 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 working capital program. Yeah, that's a great clarification. Thank you. Uh, so the entire 7A program, in fact, every lending program that the SBA offers that is not disaster related is done through your local lender. And so what it is, is it creates a little bit of a trifecta between you, the borrower, your local bank that that is regulated and licensed to offer uh, SBA lending programs, and then the SBA as the overseer. And really what the SBA does in that that trifecta there is the SBA offers what's called a guarantee. And so whereas you would normally have to come up with, you know, if you're getting a $500,000 loan or even a, you know, $100,000 loan, uh, you would have to have a bunch of collateral, whether it's your house or whether it's your business, the SBA will actually assist in reducing the risk to the bank by offering its own yeah. guarantee. You're basically using the SBA as collateral there. So um, yeah, short answer is your loan is still through your local bank. Um, and uh, there are really excellent micro lender programs available as well. We love to talk about 7A, but if you only need five grand, eight grand, 10 grand, uh, we've just got some really, really great organizations in town that will help you out with that. Most of them nonprofits. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Chris. Yes, sir. Uh, any other questions out there? Chris, this is Charles Schaefer here. And I had one question about the increased training for active duty military people. Yes. Sir. Is that training delivered sort of in a one on one basis where the service member can come into SBA and get it? Or does he have to bring with him uh, an organized unit of the military? So the short answer to that is, um, A, uh, the Memorandum of Understanding was just signed this week. So some of the specifics are still going to be rolling out. And whether or not those programs are going to be available on the active duty stations, I think, has yet to be decided. That said, the congressionally mandated TAPS program, T-A-P-S, uh, which requires service members to receive certain kinds of transition assistance and training, will, yes, include a broad overview of the availability of some okay. of the SBA Thank you. programs. Okay, got, uh, other questions. We, yep, we've got a couple of questions here. I'll just kind of take them in order real quick. Uh, do you have bilingual staff to support entrepreneurs where English is not their first language? Heck yes. This is my favorite freaking part about this office. Uh, we have a Hmong speaker and we have a Spanish speaker in this office. We also have translation capabilities throughout the United States, immigrant owned businesses, and even um, uh, foreign born uh, individuals. They have some of the strongest track records in business creation. We have tried to make this available to uh, every a person that could be interested in starting a business here to the best of our abilities. Are there sometimes limitations? Yes, sure. uh, but we will do our best and we do have some of those linguists available. Okay. Another question is, what is the process for aspiring to undergo SBA loans? First of all, uh, go to <laughs> sba.gov and click on lending. Uh, there's a bunch of upfront information there. I will tell you that if you've ever purchased a house or if you've ever rented an apartment, you kind of understand a little bit of the financing process. It is very similar to that when you get an SBA loan through your local lender. So step number one, go to sba.gov and click on lending or go to lending.sba.gov. The other thing is talk to your community bank. If you already have a relationship with a bank, give them a call and ask if they offer SBA lending programs. If they don't, again, go to sba.gov and uh, we've got a list of available lenders on there as well. Perfect. Chris, does the SBA have any programs for people with disabilities? Specifically, um, that is a... Uh, that's more of a detailed question than I can answer after five weeks uh, in this position. Sure. My, my, uh, my instinct is to say yes, uh, but I'm, I can't think of anything that comes to mind. That's the kind of thing I would ask you to reach out to our office and let me put you in touch with one of those really smart people on the other side of the wall from me. Sure. Great answer. Uh, another question here for the working capital program. Will that have to be secured with collateral by a community lender? 
it depends is always the answer when it comes to borrowing other people's money. It always depends on a lot of factors. Uh, there are more detailed reviews of the working capital program, which, by the way, just rolled out like two weeks ago. And so, again, I can uh, I can not me. There is somebody in our office who can bore you to death on that uh, program. If you'd give us a call, we'd like to put you in touch with uh, one of our financing specialists. Perfect. Uh, another question here. Uh, this person has, we have companies founded by veterans who reside overseas with their companies having foreign addresses. Can they receive assistance from the SBA? The short answer is yes, absolutely. You can reach out to the uh, the Veteran Business Outreach Center in your home state or your uh, home of record uh, in the United States. You can also go to sba.gov uh, and uh, go through any one of the resource partners listed and we'll be able to assist. The, the short answer is if you're running a business in the United States, even if you're running it from outside the United States, these okay. resources are still available to you. Perfect. Uh, you may not have an answer to this one. This is, do you have any special programs for minority business owners, new business owners? Yeah, we absolutely do. And so is it direct from SBA? There are a couple of onesie twosies that I could mention. For example, uh, if you're trying to get into government contracting, uh, we have a uh, contracting programs that are designed for highly underserved businesses and underserved communities. Some of those are more geographically related. Um, there are certainly uh, characteristics uh, that people can have in the contracting program uh, that, um, I don't know how to say this, but Yes, the short answer is yes. Also, we work with stakeholders like our, we talked about micro lending earlier. Um, uh, one of our micro lenders is Women Venture, who uh, specializes yep. in uh, communities of color. The African Development Center is another one of those. Uh, MEDA, the Met, oh, I can't remember that acronym. Metropolitan but... Economic Development Association. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> There's a lot of acronyms in this job. So, yes. anyway, yes, we have lots of friends that we work with and we help in those lending program. So yes. Okay. A couple more questions here. If you have a 7A loan already, can you get another one and can you refinance and consolidate with another lender? As always, when it comes to financing, the answer is it depends. Have you paid on that 7A loan that you're looking to refinance? Those are some of the questions Point. that are in the process. Um, I would ask you to reach out to our office uh, or go to sba.gov go to sba.gov and click on lending. Um, the short answer is that within the program, there is the opportunity for refinancing, yes, uh, but it completely depends on your current situation. Okay. Um, I have a, one question, then there's a uh, another question for you. I had someone call me today. They are looking to, they have an SBA loan with a partner. What's the process for assumption? Is that even going to be possible? Um, it depends. And yep. that that one's really specific. Uh, if the loan is with a resource partner, like a community development financial institution, um, th those have very, very separate processes and paperwork. Um, that's just another example. If you if you have a current SBA loan or if you have an SBA loan through your local lender or if you have a disaster recovery loan like the mm -hmm. idle loan or payroll protection, any of that stuff, we have people and we work with people throughout the country that answer these questions every single day. Please don't ever feel like you're stuck working with your bank who might not be giving you the answers that you're looking for or, you know, the chat feature on the website. Uh, you can see on the bottom of your screen right now the 612 number that comes directly to our office. Also, Minnesota at SBA.gov will field every single one of your questions. Yes, I appreciate that, Chris. I use your staff listing and I've, I've worked with Maribel in your office. So certainly you have names that go with addresses that go with, with contact numbers. All right, uh, this question came in before I'll do the next one, but uh, are we able to set a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Chris? <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it, it. It depends. It depends. <laughs> um, the, that one also depends. It depends on your need. I, I, I really hate to waste people's time and I really hate to have somebody come into this office and, and sit in our lobby only to find out that they need to talk to somebody else who's either not here or not available or too busy. And so um, if you write an email to either the district office website on the bottom of your page uh, or to my uh, own inbox, Christopher.wicker at sba.gov, uh, let me know what you need and I will make sure that you either get my time or 
the time of somebody who can help you best. Perfect. Uh, does the SBA have funds available for 501c3 organizations? In general, the answer to that is no. Um, the nonprofit world operates a little bit differently, but there are certain programs. Uh, for example, if you have a 501c3 in a named disaster area, yeah, there are absolutely programs available. Um, if you're generally just a 501c3 looking for startup funding, we may not have the resources available for you, but we do have uh, a long list of people that we work with that may have some of those resources for you. Perfect. Uh, Chris, I have no more questions for you <laughs> right now. All right. Uh, I want to say thank you to everybody uh, for your patience as I went through some technology issues in the start of this. Thank you very much for what you do. Uh, I know as a former small business owner, uh, it's about the hardest thing you can do and the deepest cliff that you can jump off of. So uh, thank you for what you're doing. And if you ever need me, uh, we're here to help. Okay. And Chris, as always, we have one last question that snuck in here. You offer classes for local government. Um, if the question is uh, education classes for local government, uh, yes, actually, I'm usually the one who does those. We do okay. presentations on SBA resources for any municipality that needs it. Perfect. Great answer. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. All right. Let's get back to everybody here. Uh, I will pass it off to my colleague. Um, Neela Malgar. Hello, everyone. And Chris, I think you're still sharing your screen. Um, thank you to Chris. Thank you to Mark uh, for moderating this discussion. But these meetings are free, all of you. So if there's other questions that you have, whether it be to SBA, to the SBDC program, to, to the other offices here at DEED, um, we are here to to answer your questions, or if you have questions for other peers on the call, other business owners. And actually, Neela, we do have a question. Um, and the question is, is there a good resource related to food manufacturing? And maybe that's something for the Minnesota Chamber. Um, I certainly have some resources that I, I believe I've, I've gathered for that. But if anyone has an answer for that, that that'd be great. If there could be more, a little bit more details provided, I can send some links too in the chat. We have such a strong food and ag sector. So from yeah. the Department of um, Agriculture to naturally uh, Minnesota to AURI to Green Seam, it just it a little bit depends on, on the type of question. All right. Uh, Hi, Mark. This is Tammy Wickstrom. Hey, Tammy. Marky. I jumped in, but I just want to mention that Women Ventures also does has a food um, support network for businesses, so they will do some support around specific food businesses. Uh, Perfect. Thank you, Tammy. And Mark, this is Charles. I just wanted to mention a couple of issues here that are not really questions, but one I wanted to mention uh, a couple of changes in our guide to starting a business in Minnesota, which I believe most of the audience should be familiar with. Uh, it's uh, designed to provide timely, accurate, and comprehensive information. And it's available in hard copy and online. And this year, beginning in uh, 2024, it's also available in what we call a flipping book or a flip book which is just what it sounds like. The pages flip and you do you can advance them or, or uh, uh, return them uh, by uh, scrolling on. The advantage that the flipping book has, it allows you to identify more uh, where you want to go and what you've been doing. So the contextual relationship between the sections that you looked at are more obvious. We're also going to have soon, with a capital S, uh, the guide in an ebook version, uh, which will appear in uh, a uh, device that or software that will go to libraries, and the libraries can uh, provide people with uh, ebook readers. Uh, we're not quite sure how soon that's going to happen, but relatively soon, I think. Uh, then the other one was a question that uh, I got uh, just the other day. Someone said, are there any things that we can't ask the SBDC? 
or as 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 the SBAO, uh, and th there are a couple. Uh, one, we're not allowed to practice law, so we can give we can give you good e legal information, but we can't tell you how to fill out forms, for example, or give you an opinion about what the effect of an action will, on your business will be. The other thing is that we can't do speculative stuff. Uh, you can call me and ask uh, what the head of the Federal Reserve has said about the possibility of uh, changes in the uh, interest rate in the next couple of months. And I can report what is publicly known, that he has said that uh, we can expect a change of uh, 25 basis points down in September and in December. How the uh, Federal Open Market Committee works and what they're going to do about that, how they're going to arrive at those numbers, I don't know, and I can't speculate as to what they might be. So uh, we can we can give you very straightforward information, uh, but we can't uh, practice law on your behalf. We can't speculate about what things might or might not be. Thanks, Charles. Uh, we have a question in the chat. Uh, who should I connect with to get my DBE designations for my business? How long does it take to get a DBE certification? And I think that answer will uh, depend on who you think your customers are, your clients are. Uh, last month, we had uh, Apex Accelerators um, that work with the uh, Minnesota Department of Administration. Um, they can help with the general guidelines about getting into different categories, but I would say DBE, if you're talking about dealing with the federal government, that would be the, the SBA in, in Minneapolis. You can you can look them up online for their DBE part, which I'm trying to do right now, or give them a call and they will point you in the, uh, in the uh, direction. Um, like, for example, if you just did a DBE certification, just a, a broad search like that, um, the Minnesota Department of Transportation has has their own certification. I believe the Metropolitan Council does. So it kind of depends on who you're who you're have to supply this information to. What information are are they looking for? But but uh, DBE, I would uh, contact the SBA directly. I also wanted to to share about the calendar. I see that in the chat. Yep. Um, I, I I put in the the link about our statewide and uh, calendar for startups and small businesses. Anyone is welcome to use that, any of the support organizations on the call. Um, we can um, tag your calendar and it's an automatic feed. We're trying to still work with the SBA to connect their calendar to this calendar, but multiple organizations all across the state are using that calendar, hoping that we can make it easier for our businesses to navigate the great resources that are available. Uh, to you uh, with, without having to go to multiple calendars. Thanks, Neela. Yeah, it's a lot of our organizations have newsletters also, so it's uh, there's information in there. Uh, I'm looking up an answer to a hopefully an answer to a question here. Someone was asking, are there funds available for um, opening an electric charging station aligned with environmental or solar statutes? Um, the answer is possibly yes. I don't know of them. Uh, personally, but the um, the Minnesota Department of Transportation, just through the link in the chat, has a national electrical, sorry, electric vehicle infrastructure program. So that would be where you would um, dig into. Um, and also probably with the uh, Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, I'll throw a link of information in here also. Uh, so there's there's just various sources on that. So so that's where we uh, we stand with with that, and and also you can always give us a call at the small business assistance office. You can send us an email. We can flesh out maybe more details of information that we can find with you. Uh, we don't have the answers to everything, but we can certainly point you in the in the right uh, right direction for that. And as I'm looking here with the uh, questions, I. Oh, here we go. Do you have any advice for people running really small businesses like craft markets? That's a open question to, to everybody here. So my 
my personal advice for, for coming from the small business assistance office is um, identify what, what you're trying to do, understand your costs, figure out the cost of materials, supplies, uh, your time, um, chart that. Yeah, I think you have to uh, start sometimes very small and chart so you have that data to know if, you, if it took you 100 hours to produce something and your return was maybe negative dollars, then there's a there's a measurement for you. Uh, but certainly speaking with us, we, we can certainly help you uh, give you ideas on, on where to go, how to start. Uh, we have talked to a number of uh, different types of businesses from large and small, and we can share that that knowledge with you. We have another question here. Is there uh, financial assistance for people who um, uh, or veterans or civilians living overseas with no U.S. business activity. Uh, if anyone has an answer to that, that would be that would be helpful. I I personally would would think that there is not anything that I, I can think of uh, uh, directly. Don't see any responses for that. Um, another question here. Who should I connect with to get my, that's the, the DBE, but there was this one, looking for more process to be followed, documents to be maintained, best practices to be followed, mainly uh, support guidance for distribution. So certainly we are the, the first point of, of entry for giving you some of the information. As, as Chris mentioned, SCORE, the Small Business uh, Development Centers, your local um, uh, economic development authorities. Um, but we can, if you want to contact us directly, we can give you more, more details on that. But it's, it's kind of a, an amalgamation of all kinds of best practices, things that you'll need to know, things that maybe you didn't need to know that you'll, you'll go find out. We, we have that information and we can point you to, the, to, our, to our partners for that. And someone mentioned in the chat, the Department of Agriculture has a lot of great resources uh, for manufactured foods. Um, they have a, a wide variety of uh, funding programs. And I'm looking down here. I um, got that. Let's see. Uh, a question was put, does the SBA have networking opportunities? Uh, directly, no, but the SBA participates in a lot of events um, around the, the Twin Cities. That's, as Neela put in our calendar, there are a lot of uh, networking events, certainly coming up uh, again in the fall, that kind of this whole group of us usually attend, whether it's uh, straight business assistance, whether it's Apex Accelerators, Department of Administration, uh, Department of Revenue, Department of Labor and Industry. We have kind of all the same players will participate in these events to uh, to provide information. Uh, let's see. There's that. There's that. Um, let's see. Could we repeat the programs and entities that partner with new minority small business owners. Certainly, just please give us a call, send us an email, and we will pull together um, information on that. We certainly uh, do that already in our guide to starting a business that Charles mentioned. It's in paper form, it's in electronic format, a couple of different versions of that. We have a section in the resource directory that talks about management assistance and manage, or, and assistance for minority owned uh, business owners. So we that information is kind of compiled already. So certainly in our guide to starting a business in Minnesota, and if you wanna contact me directly, mark.simmer, at state.mn.us, or we have a brand new email address for the small business office. See if anyone can remember this, small business at state.mn.us. So we try to make that a little bit shorter. I can send you a physical copy of the book out. I can, I can get that section for you. I can send you the electronic version. We have, we have lots of different ways to, to get that information to you. 
Um, that, that's just a general question uh, from Kristen. Would a brewery, brewery count towards a food business? And I think in general, that answer is yes, because the, the brewery has to deal with um, hops, grains, barleys. You have a lot of foods that go into to making that. Um, another question here from Amy, who would I contact regarding healthcare consulting business uh, geared towards those aged over 65 uh, years old and possibly 55 years old, preventing medication errors in the home, et cetera? Um, I think you could certainly speak to us and we could find some context for you, I believe, but probably some uh, real um, experienced people in the field probably already, either through the small business development centers. And if Andy wants to jump in on that, I, I think that would be a good resource. And then also the uh, uh, a SCORE mentor, people who've been in that, uh, that line of business or, or similar would, would be really your, your best resource. Mark, I'll just jump in real quick. Uh, Amy, sure. I would say recommend you know contacting one, your local small business development center. We have some specialized consultants that are experienced in either um, healthcare or something around those fields that probably can get you pointed in the right direction. So I'll throw my email in the chat. You can send me an email. I can get you connected directly to that regional director. All right. Thanks, Andy. Andy is our uh, statewide director for the Minnesota Small Business Development Centers. Uh, we have a question here. Our are you aware of any grant dollars for expanding businesses? Neela, you want to you want to take that one? Yes, I'm putting a link in right now. Um, cool. There are very limited grant dollars. We do currently have a program called the Promise Act, and that there are some grants available, but to very specific geographic areas. And then, as Chris had mentioned, um, we do have some grants available for high high tech, high growth companies. But what I just included in the chat is an interactive uh, matrix that you can select the type of funding you're looking for, whether that be grants, loans, nope. um, other, other types of funding mechanisms and the type of business you are, your geographic location, and that will help narrow down uh, what you might be eligible for. Um, so I, I'm hoping that you find that helpful. Um, we're, we're trying to make the resources available uh, a little easier to navigate for all of you. Yeah. Thanks, Neil. I, I use that tool all the time and, and speaking to uh, to the people that contact us. It is not a, a fun uh, series of uh, a way to answer people. Do you have grants? And that answer is, is for the most part, no, you have to fit into very narrow categories. It's a certainly a change from, from during the pandemic when there was grant money available. So if if the answer is no, we, we certainly want to um, include more information than just no, there's, there's no grant money. There are other programs that are available and all of our resource partners would be uh, glad to help you in, in looking for that. And, and sometimes it really comes down to looking for what, what do you think you need and have you done any really detailed look at do you need this? How much do you need? You can kind of grow your business as you as you go along. Um, certainly, it's it's easier with lots of money, but with lots of money become comes that that challenge of finding it, and 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 paying it back within a within a short period of time. Um, we have a question here: Is there any extra help for business startups for those that are currently unemployed? Anyone want to chip in on this one? There are some programs on our workforce side if you are unemployed. Um, but some of the other just general about how to start a business, yep. uh, steps to starting a business would be the same regardless. Um, and we could try to um, link you to the right the right programs on our workforce side. Yeah, th thanks, Neela. Uh, Career Force is a is a really good destination for uh, for gathering a lot of information. Certainly helps put potential employees with uh, potential employers, uh, but they can certainly um, kind of guide you in that area and also us. There is for a lot of these questions, there is there is not a go from point A to point B. It really depends a little bit on on where you're at, what you're trying to do. 
but uh, there is certainly, like Neela said, there is help for for everyone who is looking to uh, to start a business. Um, and uh, Todd Olson chipped in with uh, at the Career Force Center's computer skills, project management, cert programs, and more. So yes, the the uh, the statewide Career Force uh, network is is a is a great um, resource for for people. Uh, Amy has a comment. I, I think it's worthwhile. There doesn't seem to be any help or opportunities for those that have a bachelor, bachelor's degree or more. Um, Amy, if you want to uh, add in what you what your personal thoughts on, on that are, um, I, I know that we don't, that isn't a measurement that, that we talk to people about your education level. It's a lot of it's just your experience and, and, and what you know about work. So if you have some other comments on that, that would be great. Okay, so Amy added she doesn't qualify for any of the career force programs, education or help due to your education. Um, then if you want to have a conversation with uh, with us or another resource partner about about starting a business that 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 isn't going to come into play would be we would be glad to uh, to to, uh, to speak with you. Uh, Todd again threw in some very good information for that about this organization. Uh, he put in someone mentioned uh, nonprofit resources uh, for you might be Propel. It's a, it's a, uh, I believe it's a nonprofit organization, and they focus on assisting uh, nonprofits uh, do what they're what they're intending to do. All right, we're at uh, two fifty seven. Uh, I've heard myself talk talk enough for today. Um, we we really. Uh, enjoy having these type of discussions and the the questions have been super super useful because it you'd never know when that part of information will touch somebody else and that spurs something here i can see a few more comments coming in here about about women ventures that's a that's a really good organization that yes does help women it helps really any uh small businesses so there are there's just lots of players out in the field and that's what we would try and do uh, for for our part, the Department of Employment and Economic Development is get you in touch with those, answer as many questions as as we can for you, and get you to the next level of of who can uh, provide assistance. So with that, nobody has any other questions. We will end it for today, and I will get the uh, meeting recording passed on to the uh, the proper people, and we will get it posted. So so certainly there's a ton of information in the chat, um, and we'll we'll get that up online. So if that's it, I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. Thanks for coming.